Hello everyone! Today I'm going to tell you the Vibrio Para Hemolyticus. My name is Diana Nufarhana binti Muhammad Zailani and I am one of the students of FIS 3106 Microbiology of Aquatic Environment from K1 and my lecturer is Dr. Muhammad Danish Daniel Abdullah. So what is Vibrio Para Hemolyticus? Vibrio Para Hemolyticus is a ubiquitous marine bacterium and human pathogen. See how cute it is. So uh, Vibrio Para Hemolyticus have multiple identities. Firstly, it is a swimmer cell. Swimmer cell is a single solar flagellum is adapted to life in illiquid environments. The polar flagellum is powered by the sodium motif force and can propel the bacterium at fast speeds. It related to the free living form of Vibrio parahemolyticus is well suited for locomotion in liquid environments. The root shaped bacterium is efficiently propelled by a single polar flagellum. Energy to power the flagellum is derived from the sodium motive force. Next is the swarmer cell. The swarmer cell is adapted for movement on surfaces or through highly viscous environments. The polar flagellum performs poorly in medium of high viscosity, while lateral flagella efficiently propel the bacterium in highly viscous environments. In general, the extent of hyperflagellation of the swarm cell correlates with successfulness of swarming. Vibro parahemolyticus is the superior swarmers and can have hundreds of flagella per cell. Movement for some of these swarming organisms has been shown to also require production of extracellular molecules capable of altering surface tension. As you can see here, the swimmer and the swarmers, and here is the swarm colonies of Vibro parahemolyticus. Next is opaque cell, OOP. Descendants of a single colony can have multiple colony morphotypes. The variants are described as opaque OP. The switching event is low enough so that it is possible to obtain essentially uniform populations with less than one alternate form per thousand cells. Properties of OP and TR are distinct and multiple trees are affected. For example, OP cells aggregate in certain kinds of liquid media possess a thick ruthenium red staining capsular material, display a different array and distribution of outer membrane proteins, and swarm very poorly compared to TR cells. It is postulated that differences in cell surface characteristics lead to differential cell packing within the colony, which determines the opaque or the translucent properties. Next, the translucent cell or TR. Translucent cell is a result of differences in the transmission of light by the colony. In liquids or on surfaces, cell types switch reversibly between OP and TR. Switching may occur randomly so that a subset of the population is pre-adapted or it may be responsive to specific environmental conditions. The OP and TR forms having different cell surface characteristics may adhere preferentially to different surfaces or selectively auto-aggregate and thus facilitate detachment. So for the ideas, this is the ideas the OP that's switching to the TR and here is the swimmer, swarmer and from the colony development, biofilm formation. Next is in the lab. The colonies of Vibrio parahemolyticus on TCBS agar. What is TCBS? TCBS agar is thiosulfate citrate bile salt sucrose agar. OTCBS agar is a type of selective agar culture plate that is used in microbiology laboratories to isolate Vibrio species. 
The morphology Vibroparamelaticus is a sucrose non-fermenting organism and produces a blue colonies, blue green colonies. TCBS agar is green when prepared. Sucrose non-fermenting organisms such as Vibroparamelaticus produce green to blue green colonies. As you can see here, the blue green colonies. These are the other example. The TCBS agar showing typical viral parahemolyticus colonies. Here are the blue green. And this is the differences between vibrio colony on TCBS and vibrio parahemolyticus in TCBS agar. This is the closer picture. For the more info, Vibro parahemolyticus is a species of bacteria found in the marine environment, seafoods and the feces of patients with acute enteritis. Where we can find this Vibro is at the estuarine, marine, coastal environments, especially in shellfish. Occupying a variety of niches, Vibro parahemolyticus is a common bacterium in marine and estuarine environments. It can exist planktonically or attached to submerged, inner and animate surfaces, including suspended particulate matter, zooplankton, fish, and shellfish. And the characteristic, it is a root shape curve that uh, does not form spores and motile. As you can see here, the root shape. Yeah. For the taxonomy, the domain bacteria. Domain is bacteria. The phylum is proteobacteria. The class is gamma proteobacteria. The order is vibronils. Family is vibronaceae. Genus is vibrio. Species is vibrio parahemolyticus. Yeah, this is closer picture. Next. Did you know the presence of pathogenic bacteria in the worldwide marine environment raises concerns of human on food safety due to the latter potential, causing disease outbreaks depending on the environmental conditions? A good example is Vibrio parahemolyticus, a member of Vibrio species from the Vibronaceae family. Vibrio parahemolyticus is a gram-negative halophilic bacterium that is widely disseminated in estuary, marine, and coastal surrounding. And the transmission, Vibrio parahemolyticus strains are transmitted by consumption of raw or undercooked seafood and mishandled marine products. Most People become infected by eating raw or undercooked shellfish, particularly oyster. So here is the oyster, the delicious oyster, eating the raw oysters. Uh oh, the symptoms include the watery diarrhea, abdominal cramping, nausea, vomiting, fever and chills. Usually these symptoms begin within 24 hours of exposure you can see here vibrio parahemolyticus attack our gastrointestinal tract and become a food poisoning so the other symptom of gastroenteritis and nausea and vomiting diarrhea loss of appetite fever headache abdominal pain abdominal cramps bloody stool dehydration lethargic so the disease is Vibrio, paramel, Vibrio parahemolyticus causing acute gastroenteritis. In rare cases, Vibrio parahemolyticus causes one infection, ear infection or spectisemia that may be life-threatening to individuals with pre-existing medical conditions. Since its discovery, Vibrio parahemolyticus has been found to be responsible for 20 to 30 percent of food poisoning cases in Japan and seafood borne in these seafood borne diseases in many Asian countries. Vibrio parahemolyticus was also recognized as the leading cause of human gastroenteritis associated with seafood consumption in the United States. The worldwide prevalence of Vibrio parahemolyticus 
with gastroenteritis cases stresses the need for understanding of the virulence factors involved and their effects on human. Vibrio parahemolyticus as an emerging pathogen associated with seafood consumption and its effect to human in terms of pathogenesis prevalence. So what is gastroenteritis? You guys can read it here, okay? Yeah. This vibrio attack our intestinal cell in this in this symptom. Okay, in the nutshell, vibrio parahemolyticus is. Okay, thank you.